Today we're going to be looking at SQL, not so much giving you any information directly about SQL, but how to use SQL along with your Java programs, and then specifically how to use that within the context of Java servlets. First thing to say about SQL is that it is a standard language across the industry. It's known as structured query language and is the language that we use for manipulating relational databases. And we can do things such as create, populate and delete tables, change data in, in those tables and retrieve data from the tables. Retrieving data from tables is known as querying. So when we execute queries, what we're doing is extracting data from the relational database tables and presenting that as what's known as a result set. And that is the set of data resulting from our query. There are many relational database systems and what we're going to learn in this lecture is going to be applicable essentially to all of them because when we connect with Java to a database, that little bit is going to be different according to the database. But thereafter, it's all going to be the same for whatever database you're using. Now, we assume that for this lecture, you already know SQL. If you don't, then you're going to need to go on a crash course. There's some information here, for example, which is at my website here at the university. And uh, you can also go to other websites and books and so on to update yourself on SQL. For a lot of the remainder of this module, what you will be doing is using your Java servlets to access databases. And we'll show you how to do that in today's lecture. It is a very easy process. There are basically two things to do. First of all, set up a connection, and then, having connected, to manipulate the data using SQL statements from within the Java code. When you write a Java program that accesses one kind of database, for example, you might write it using Oracle, then if you decide that you want to change your database for that program to a different database, such as MySQL, then you've only got to change two lines of code in your program basically that little bit of code that connects to the database. There's a different way of connecting to an Oracle from connecting to a MySQL database. All the rest of the coding remains the same. And that's one of the, the great things, I think, about using databases within Java. Now, when it comes to connecting to the database, we need to understand a little bit about the components that we're using. First of all, we have our database and we have our Java class. And there are two routes of making the connection. If the database manufacturer has provided a set of classes, Java classes, for connecting to databases, these are known as JDBC classes, then we can use those classes directly from our program. On the other hand, if the database manufacturer has not provided JDBC classes, then what we can use instead is what is known as the JDBC ODBC bridge. ODBC is an industry standard connectivity protocol for interacting with databases. And so what we can do is on the host computer, we can create using the administrative tools from the control panel, an ODBC driver. That driver will allow the JDBC bridge within Java to connect to that database. Either way is, is really quite straightforward. The only difference is over on this route, you've got to create an ODBC driver before you're able to connect. And of course, taking this route means that there are two intermediate drivers for connecting to the database, whereas over on this side, there's only the one set of intermediate classes. And therefore, this side is likely to be a little bit more efficient in the interaction. So the first thing we have to do when we decide on the database that we use is to work out which of those two routes we're going to follow. Probably the best thing to do, actually, is just to go onto the web page is for that database manufacturer to see if they provide JDBC classes and then download them. Very often they are free. And so once you've downloaded and installed them, then you can just make use of them. So the first thing we have to do once we've got our driver route sorted out is to connect to the database. The preparation for that involves these three things. First of all, import the java.sql package. In that package, we'll find all kinds of classes that we need for interacting with databases. We also need to work out the URL of the database that we're connecting to. And again, that will be different depending on the database that you're using. So for example, if you're using 
the JDBC ODBC bridge, then you'll need to use this kind of a string. JDBC colon, ODBC colon, and then you type the name of the driver that you created. If you're using JDBC classes, then you'll have to consult the database manufacturer for the details of that connection string. For Oracle, for example, here at the university, then what we would use is JDBC colon, Oracle colon, thin colon, at, and then we put in the domain name of the host that's uh, got the database on there, the port number that the, the database is connected to, and then the system ID for the database that we're using. MySQL will have a different connection string. And again, you need to go to the database manufacturer to find the details of those. So those are the first two things. Import, work out your URL, and the third thing then is to load the database driver manager within your program. And that's going to require two options, depending on the kind of connectivity that you're using. If it's the JDBC ODBC bridge, then this is the code that you'll use. In a try-catch block, you'll have class.forName and then this string here. That string is always the same, no matter what database you're using. If you're using the JDBC classes provided by the database manufacturer, then again, you're going to have to consult the documentation to find the correct name for the class. And once you've got that, you use a try-catch block, and this time it's driver manager dot register driver and then you create a new instance of whatever the class name is that your manufacturer says that you need to use so again for oracle it will be oracle dot jdbc dot driver dot oracle driver that class will be in the jdbc classes that you've downloaded from the manufacturer website and that's it in terms of differences from here on what we'll be looking at in this lecture is going to be the same whatever relational database you're using, so long as it supports standard SQL. I mentioned earlier that we have to import the java.sql package. As part of that package, remember a package is just a, a library of classes that we can use. Within that package, we have a connection class. And so to set up the connection from our program to the database, we need to do this. We declare a connection object, we're calling it con, which is initialized to null in this example. And then in a try-catch block, we attempt to get a connection. Remember the driver manager that we loaded earlier? We call driver manager dot get connection and pass three parameters. The URL, that's what we prepared earlier. That is the URL of the database that we're connecting to. And then the username and the password for that database. What happens is that this method, getConnection, will then attempt to connect to the, to the nominated database using these credentials. If everything works, then what gets returned is a reference to that connection object, which is then stored in our variable con. On the other hand, if it doesn't work, then it's going to throw an exception, probably an SQL exception. And uh, in this example, all we're doing is printing the stack trace, in other words, that very sort of long list of method calls to show exactly where the problem occurred. And that's going to be printed on the default output, which for your users is probably not going to be very helpful if you just do that. But in terms of debugging, that's quite a useful thing to do. So if everything has worked and there's been no exceptions, then the connection is established to the database and you're now ready to use it.